Hello everyone, myself Dr. Rajesh S. Baligar, working as assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, JSS Arts, Science and Commerce College, Gokak, which is affiliated to Rani Chennamma University, Belagavi. For B.Sc. first semester, I am going to deal with atomic structure. Here, the term atom is derived from a Greek word atomio, which means indivisible or uncuttable. That means we cannot cut an atom into two or three parts. In 1808, John Dalton proposed his theory known as Dalton Atomic Theory. to explain the atomic structure. According to this theory, an atom is considered as an ultimate particle of as an ultimate particle particle of matter. But emission of negatively charged and positively charged particles from radioactive elements radioactive elements and gases under the passage of electricity at very low pressure clearly indicated that atom consists of three smaller subatomic particles or three smaller fundamental particles like proton neutron and electron. Thus, it is fully established that the atom consists of three fundamental particles like protons, neutrons and electrons. Here, proton and neutrons are present in the nucleus and electrons are revolving around the nucleus as shown in this figure. If it is the nucleus, It consists of both protons and neutrons. And electrons. It is well established that all the three fundamental particles are arranged in an atom as shown in this figure. The nucleus contains, if this is the atom and it is the nucleus and nucleus contains protons and neutrons and electrons are revolving around the nucleus. Here the discrete, discrete orbits are proposed by Bohr's model. Now let us study about these fundamental particles a little bit more. That is, If you consider first one electron, it is a negatively charged particle revolving around the nucleus in order to balance the number of electrons uh, sorry number of protons present on the nucleus and mass of electron is equal to 9.108 into 10 raise to minus 31 kg or 0 0.000587 atomic mass unit then charge on the electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and it is represented by it is represented as our electron. Similarly, if you consider proton the next fundamental particle it is a positively charged particle present in the nucleus. Its mass is 1.672 into 10 raise to minus 27 kg or 1.0073 atomic mass unit. Here again the charge is same. In case of electron it is minus 
and in case of proton it is positive sign that means opposite sign 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and it is represented as h plus or p prime then if you consider the neutron neutrons are neutral particles neutral particles present in the nucleus and mass of neutron is 1.675 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg or 1.0087 atomic mass unit the charge is equal to 0 that means these are neutral particles and they do not carry any charge and it is represented as n here if you compare the mass of neutron and mass of proton the mass of neutron is slightly more than that of the proton it is a mass of proton is 1.0073 atomic mass unit whereas the nu neutron 1.0087 but 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 for practical purpose we are consider we are going to consider the masses of both proton and neutron as the same that means the mass of proton and mass of neutrons are considered as one atomic mass unit thus if you compare the masses of all the three fundamental particles we can write a relation like this one mass of neutron is greater than mass of proton which in turn is greater than that of the mass of electron here the presence of neutron in the nucleus is very important because the presence of neutron it minimizes the repulsion among the protons and hence causes for the increase in the mass of the atom further it is very clear that since the mass of the atom is almost entirely due to the presence of protons and neutrons it is evident that almost entire mass of an atom is resides in the nucleus here as the number of proton in the nucleus increases the number of neutrons required to give stability increases at a faster rate elements with up to uh, elements with atomic number up to 20 mostly contain equal number of proton and neutrons after that the number of neutrons present is found to be more than the number of protons let us know one more term that is atomic number what do you mean by atomic number or what it represents it represents the total number of protons it represents the total number of protons present in the nucleus um, mass number it is represented by age it represents the total number of protons and neutrons present in the nucleus that means mass number it represents the total number of protons plus total number of neutrons present in the nucleus then the relation between number of protons that is atomic number z and the number of neutrons and mass number is given by a relation that is a is equal to z plus n where a is mass number of the nucleus in atomic mass unit and z is number of positive charge or number of protons present in the nucleus and n is the number of neutrons in the nucleus in case of hydrogen atom if you want to see the number of neutrons it is very clear that hydrogen atom contains one proton and one electron and zero 
neutron that means hydrogen atom do not contain neutrons. Now in order to explain the basic structure of atom number of scientists have put forward their theories such as Dalton put his theory put forward his theory in 1808 and then Thomson put his theory in 1897 to explain the atomic structure the model is known as palm pudding model and in 1911 Rutherford put his theory known as Rutherford's nuclear model and then Bohr model came and then Schrodinger and then Chadwick all these scientists have put forward their theories to explain the exact structure of an atom. Now out of all these theories for your syllabus that is BSc first semester uh, Bohr's review theory or Bohr's atomic model is kept for your study. So before going to Bohr's model let me start with Rutherford model because this is the first model which has explained clearly the arrangement of all the three fundamental particles in a well systematic manner. Let us start with Rutherford's nuclear model. According to Rutherford the atom looks like as shown in the figure. The first assumption of nuclear uh, Rutherford model is an atom consists of a minute positively charged body which is located at its center and it is known as nucleus. The first one is the first assumption of Rutherford nuclear model is the atom if it is atom it consists of a very minute positively charged body which is known as nucleus and it is present exactly at the center of the atom. The second assumption is since the mass of the proton and neutron will contribute to the mass of the atom therefore the entire mass of the atom is residing in the nucleus. Here the nucleus is very small even though it is very small it contains all the protons and neutrons belonging to this atom. Third assumption is the nucleus is surrounded by a suitable number of electrons revolving around it to balance the positive charge on the nucleus. Here the nucleus is positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. Here the suitable number means whatever number of positive charge pres is present on the nucleus that many number of electrons are revolving around the nucleus. The third assumption of Rutherford model is a suitable number of electrons are revolving around the nucleus in order to balance the number of positive charge present on the nucleus. And the fourth assumption is here the most of the space or most of the gap between the nucleus and the revolving electron is empty. According to Rutherford nuclear model the very important uh, assumption is that is the fourth assumption the gap between the nucleus and the electron which is revolving around this nucleus in order to balance the positive charge present on the nucleus is almost it is empty. Next the question comes since the electrons are negatively charged and nucleus is positively charged why the electrons are freely moving or why the empty space is present in between the nucleus and the electron. For this also Rutherford nuclear model has given a solution in the form of its next assumption. According to Rutherford nuclear model the centrifugal force arising from the circular motion of electron that means when the electrons are circulating or revolving around the nucleus there will be creation of there will be, arise, there will be creation of centrifugal force that means if electrons are revolving in this fashion so there will be creation of centrifugal force. Here since the electrons are revolving around the nucleus there will be creation of centrifugal force. This centrifugal force will balance the electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus. So that is why the electrons will revolve around the nucleus when the centrifugal force and the electrostatic force of attractions are equal and opposite in direction. So because of this reason that is due to creation of centrifugal force electrons do not fall into the nucleus. Thus according to Rutherford nuclear model the atom looks like 
as shown in this figure. That is, the atom consists of one minute positively charged body which is located exactly at its center and it is known as nucleus. Even though it is a small in size, it, con it contains all the protons and neutrons belonging to that atom. Here, since the almost entire mass of the atom is basically due to the presence of proton and neutron, therefore it is evident that almost entire mass of the atom is residing in the nucleus. Further, a suitable number of electrons are revolving around the nucleus in order to balance the number of a positive charge present on the nucleus. And the further, he assumed that whatever the gap between the nucleus and the revolving electron is there is almost empty. And further, he gave the answer for the uh, electrostatic attraction force between the how the electrons are revolving around the nucleus. For that, he gave one more assumption or uh, that the centrifugal force which arises due to the circular motion of an electron will balance the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and the electron. So that is why the electron even though it is negatively charged do not fall into the nucleus. This is how the Rutherford nuclear model has explained successfully the arrangement of all the fundamental particles in a systematic manner. Even though Rutherford nuclear model has explained successfully the arrangement of all the fundamental particles in an atom, an objection came into picture to the, this model. The objection was made by the Neil Bohr. According to Neil Bohr, Rutherford nuclear model or Rutherford atom should be unstable. This is because according to J.C. Maxwell, that means he took the help of J.C. Maxwell concept. According to J.C. Maxwell, whenever an electric charge is subjected for acceleration, whenever an electric charge is subjected for acceleration, it emits radiation and loses energy. But according to Rutherford, electrons which are charged particles are revolving around the nucleus. Hence, it is also subjected for acceleration and so emit radiations continuously and lose energy. If this happens, its orbit should become smaller and smaller and at one stage the electron should come and drop into the or it, it should fall into the nucleus. But this however does not happen. Why this will not happen? This was explained by Bohr on the basis of quantum theory of radiation which was explained by Max Planck in 1901.